Good morning, everyone. This is Janie Seltzer. I am here with my husband, Pastor Don Seltzer, where we are broadcasting live from Hidden Life Ministries. It is our call to help others understand, as Colossians 3.3 says, that our real lives are hidden with Christ in God. And on this day, it is a very serious and sober time, as we all know. Thank you for coming on. I see you. Hi, Kathy and David. Good morning. I want to give a special uh, hello to our chapel family, uh, loving family of faith who are listening as well. And I would like to thank Cindy, Julie, and Tom Ziegler, who graciously made this ministry possible so that we can reach the friends of Mr. Zig Ziegler around the world and many others. So thank you, Cindy and Julie and Tom, and many blessings to you and to yours. A lot of legs underneath the table. A lot of legs, yes. Underneath the table. Yes. And so we would like in this serious and sober time around the world to open to you a place of peace where we can gather in worship together. We can honor our Abba Daddy, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the triune uh, God who we worship so that he might be glorified and honored in our lives in this time. For he calls us all to prayer and I'll open us in prayer and then my husband, Pastor Don, is going to lead in some teaching from Psalm 23. And so I hope that you will begin with me right now by just, um, we have a tradition mm -hmm. at Hidden Life Ministries, we call it Palms Up. And if you are comfortable, we'd like to encourage you to put up your palms as an act of surrender to God and um, now and receiving and receiving yes yeah, his, his mercy receiving his mercy and his love and to breathe to breathe in his presence breathe in the very breath of God otherwise we would not be able to speak and so we honor him with our palms up if you would join me and let's just um, be still and know that he is God Holy Father, we stand at the foot of the cross, thanking you for your incredible love. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for loving us so much that you proved it to us in sending your only begotten Son to take our place, to take our carry our guilt and our and our diseases into his own flesh. And you have said to us, Father, by your wounds, we are healed. By your stripes, we're made whole. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We acknowledge that our greatest hope is in you, Lord. Our only hope in the end is in you. You are the one and only God, maker of heaven and earth, we worship you, Father. We worship you with our mind, our bodies, our souls, and we offer to you a sacrifice of praise even now, for you have said, offer to me a sacrifice of praise, and I will be pleased. And so, Father, we do. We offer to you a sacrifice of praise, not because things are good, but because you are good. We honor you, Father. You are always good. Your ways are beyond our ways. Your thoughts are beyond our thoughts. And we trust you even now. We ask that you would, Lord Jesus, by the power of your spirit, lay your hand of healing on those who are languishing in disease. Oh, Lord Jesus, heal your people. 
Heal all of those who call upon you in faith. Hmm. We pray for those who are oppressed by fear. You are the one who delivers us from fear. Thank you for your perfect love that casts out all fear. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You have told us that when we are weak, you are strong. And so we stand in your strength, not ours. We intercede for this entire planet. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit and pan out throughout this planet as only you can. We ask for your mercy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We ask for your healing. We ask for your truth to rise up. As we, as we lean in to hear, open our ears to hear, and our minds to understand the grace that you offer even now, especially now, Father, especially now. Thank you for hearing us. We pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, of all things I read, well, first, I want to say I'm honored to be with you again. Thank you, dear. Uh, 46 years and five years dating, I'm honored to be with you. <laughs> but uh, I read in the Los Angeles Times just this morning, Steve Lopez, one of their uh, writers for years, uh, wrote this, I, I believe, compelling article. It was on the front page of the LA Times. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to uh, read a portion of that. His heading is, Let's pull together mm. and stand apart. Mm. Anxious, scared, frustrated, same here. If the days seem long and yet they're gone before you can remember what you even did to pass the time, mm. don't worry. That's going around. I can't remember what I did yesterday. Don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow and I fluctuate between near certainty that loved ones will be fine and mortal dread that we're all going to die. Mm. I exaggerate a bit, sure, but time is warped. Our, late is our fate is uncertain, rather, and the world's fifth largest economy, referring to California, mm. has all but shut down, mm. with Governor Gavin Newsom imploring Californians, all 40 million of us, to stay home not just for our own safety, but for the health and safety of everyone else. We're charging into a new frontier without a map. Isolate, comrades, and let's pull together while standing apart. But how do you do that? How do you pull together and yet stand apart? Hmm. I thought it was a well-written article and I found myself thinking about uh, the People were asking yesterday on the radio, is God punishing us? Mm -hmm. And the responder wisely said, no, but I think he's getting our attention. Mm -hmm. I think he's getting our attention. Mm -hmm. I, I, if I could boil it down, in, uh, I'm a simple guy. And to know about God is one component. Mm -hmm. Or to have an experience of his presence in my life mm -hmm. is the other component. Do I know about God as this concept, this vague, impersonal force, this deity? Or do I, on the other hand, experience the sovereign, good, and wise God in my everyday life? Mm. You see, in each of us, there's a God-shaped vacuum. Mm. And in, in my soul and in your soul. And this can be a time where, as Vaughn's, they, they told me, they can't keep enough liquor in. Mm. And people will try to numb it, mm. the anxieties, the fears, the panic, and they will try to do whatever they can uh, to bury those pains mm. uh, with drinking. It can be with eating. It can be with porn. It can be with drugs. Uh, what happens is the person who knows about God, they're going sideways, whereas the person who knows God, who understands the intimate experience that's there for them, uh, they're going to have ability to rise above it. Mm. What I found myself going to is uh, Psalm 23. Mm. And I'm only going to cover three verses, or we're going to cover. And this is from the NLT. 
while Don is turning, I'd like to encourage all of you um, to like and share this, um, this worship time, this teaching. And also, don't forget to let us know who you are and where you are. I see you're there, uh, but everyone's quiet, as, as I'm glad you are. But I also would love for you to remember we're a community, so don't, don't hesitate to weigh in. And um, so I, I'll let you continue with Psalm 23. Okay. This is the New Living Translation. Uh, mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Mm -hmm. He lets me rest in green meadows. Mm -hmm. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. Mm -hmm. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. I like what you said yesterday. Those two words, two letters, M-Y. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I say that again? You said it to me. Yes, yeah, so many... Um, Many theologians um, and just regular folks like us understand that probably the most important word in Psalm 23 is just that two letters, my. Yeah. Is the Lord my shepherd? Mm -hmm. Do you need a shepherd right now? I do. I certainly do. You need a shepherd right now? Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to focus on, is just in these first three verses, right. what can we see about the good shepherd who we know that Jesus called himself in John chapter 10? He said, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice and they know me and no one can snatch them out of my hand. So if you know Jesus, you have a good shepherd. If you don't know Jesus, we invite you to listen deeply and we'll give you an opportunity even now as we speak for you to just bow your head and invite Jesus to be your good shepherd. And with that. Yeah, I, I believe that uh, uh, what Christ is offering and what the scriptures are offering in Psalm 23 is, is an intimacy that is so deep mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, is what the ESV says, mm -hmm. or as the NLT has, that I have all that I need. All that I need. All that I need. In other words, that you have a living reality of all that you need for significance, mm -hmm. for security, mm -hmm. and for belonging. You mm -hmm. have all that you need mm -hmm. in this upside down world we're living in right now, in this global pandemic that we have all that we need because he will satisfy us deep within our soul. Mm -hmm. Understand, significance, he's the lifter of your head. Security, he will keep you safe. Mm -hmm. And then, belonging. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. He will never abandon you. And so as you go about this, you have a my shepherd. It requires an invitation. Mm -hmm. It requires intentionality. Mm -hmm. It requires a an ability on your part and my part to say the Lord is my shepherd, mm -hmm. not their shepherd, mm -hmm. not those shepherds, uh, that those people's shepherd. It is my shepherd. It's individual. It's practical. And it's a concept that says, I want to experience the living God mm -hmm. day to day. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I have everything that I need. What does that mean? Deep contentment. What does that mean? He means that we have someone who every single day, whether we, ha we have 25,000 in America that have this disease, that they have contracted the coronavirus as of this morning. But the, in the midst of all of that, we can walk with the confidence that the Lord who is my shepherd, mm. he, I have everything that I need. I see you. I like you. I understand mm -hmm. you. I accept you, and I cherish you. Every person who's listening right now, if you could comprehend, this is the God who says, I see you. I like you. I understand you. I accept you. I cherish you. When you have that type of ongoing affection and tenderness and, and, and compassion, my, 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 we can rise above the most difficult circumstances because why? The Lord is my shepherd. Mm. I just 
um, have to say that for so many years, when Don was the senior pastor of, uh, a, of, of a Presbyterian church not too far from here, he used to say over and over, um, when Jesus is all you have, you realize that Jesus is all you need. Wouldn't you say that's appropriate right now? Yeah, I think it goes, you'll never know Jesus is all you need till Jesus is all you got. Ah, I said it wrong. When Jesus is all you got? Jesus is all you need. need. Say it one more time. You'll never know that Jesus is all you... Say it a little slower. Let's see, I forgot it now. You will never know that Jesus is all you need, need. if... You'll never know Jesus is all you need when... I forgot it now. <laughs> Oh, well, you guys got the You got point. it. You got the point. Yeah. When Jesus all is all you, you need and Jesus is all you got. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well, somebody out there remembers how he used to say it. Yeah. Um, that's why it takes two brains to remember mm. things these days, right? <laughs> well, Psalm 23, verse 1, if you could just stay on that mm. throughout this crisis, mm. okay? The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. Say it to yourself. My mm -hmm. shepherd. Say it with palms up and receiving his affection. Mm -hmm. My shepherd. I will not lack anything. Mm -hmm. he, he's given me everything that I need. Mm -hmm. All that I need. So, so, Don, aren't we talking here about soul safety? Mm -hmm. Because our bodies might not be safe. Um you know, we don't know. We might wake up tomorrow morning with uh, the coronavirus, any of us. In fact, many people woke up this morning with the disease. But your soul is still alive mm -hmm. and well. That's what we're talking about here. Yes, of course. We're not saying that if you believe in Jesus, you won't get it's this sick. disease. Um, you know, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And so the rain is falling, if you will. And so those who know him and those who don't are all equally receiving the rain. Perhaps some are and some aren't. But the, the, the key here is not whether we get it or not. The key here is how we respond to what we get. That we not be terrorized by this disease. We can be afraid, of course. I mean, it's human. We are like sheep, right? right? And sheep are the most fearful animals on the planet. There's no accident that Jesus compared us to sheep because we're fearful creatures. It's part of our human condition, friends. But Fear and terror are two entirely different things. So we're, we're talking here about an assurance that even if I get this sickness and even if I die, we're all going to die. It's just a matter of time. We need to have our soul safe in the love of Christ. Your real life is hidden with Christ in God. That's the safety we're talking about. That's the significance we're talking about. And that's the security we're talking about. Mm -hmm. right, right, Big Dog? Yeah. Yeah, that's what that, we call it. That I believe that Chuck Colson at his memorial service had the uh, passage from Jesus saying, what does it profit a man if he mm. gains the whole world but loses his soul? Yes. Colson realized, Chuck Colson, uh, in redemption, he found his soul. Mm -hmm. He found his safe place. Mm -hmm. He found the sense of the Lord is his shepherd. Mm -hmm. We go through these battles. I call it lower story, upper story. Lower story is the tumult of mm -hmm. finances, of our, our country, of, of illness, of, of what's happening to loved ones, uh, maybe having cancer. And, and we go through all this tumult. Lower story is our day-to-day -day life of our humanity. Mm -hmm. The Upper story is God, mm -hmm. God's perspective, God's ways, God's plans, God's work. When we are able to say, the Lord is my shepherd, we're taking ourselves out of the lower story, though it's still there, it's, it's still a reality. There. It's reality. But we're going into the true living reality of upper story, of saying, Lord, I have everything that I need. Mm -hmm. You're all that I need. Mm -hmm. I shall not want. Mm -hmm. The second thing, if you go to verse 2, it says that uh, he lets me lie down. Uh, he lets me, hmm, oh, rest. He lets me rest in green meadows, mm. okay? ESV says he makes me lie down in green pastures. Mm. In other words, 
you are allowing God not only to be your shepherd, but you're allowing God to direct your life mm -hmm. each and every day. In other words, your soul life. You have your responsibilities in the lower story. But in the upper story, you're saying, God, I surrender to you. You lead me beside green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. Mm -hmm. Or as the Hebrew puts it, mm -hmm. waters of rest. Mm -hmm. You're one who is continually trying to soothe me, quiet me, mm -hmm. and calm me. Mm -hmm. calm me. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard an acrostic for fear, false evidence appearing real, mm -hmm. F-E-A-R. There's a lot of evidence out there that says we should panic, we should be anxious, we should be scared, we should be frightened. And what God is saying through this verse 2, that he says, I'm quieting you down. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you calmness. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. allow me to enter in and come close and be intimate mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. He's given us his intimacy and the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. he, he lets me sit beside still waters. Mm -hmm. He says, I want to give you calmness. Mm -hmm. I want to give you quiet. Mm -hmm. And I believe that he directs us to peace and mindfulness when we invite him in, mm -hmm. not only to be our shepherd intimately, but to be the one who will give us the peace we can't seem to maintain. That's for sure. You know, um, I'm sure you know this, sweetheart, that the... Uh, the actual, the best translation is he makes us rest. The, the, the reason for that is that as sheep don't know how to rest, they're frantic, they're running around. The shepherd literally has to make the sheep rest. And aren't we like that? Don't we all fill our days too full, make our lists too long, uh, think about what I gotta do, what I have to do, and we have difficulty quieting our soul and probably it's the most important spiritual practice that any of us can master is learning to be still because that's why we're told in on the seventh day the day of completion god had us he rested on the seventh day as a pattern that he would then implement with his people that we must rest it's a loving admonition. Beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and so, again, each of these are by invitation. Mm. You're inviting God to come close. You're inviting God to come into your heart and make it his home. Mm. You're inviting God, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, uh, to have this personal, living, daily reality. Mm. You want to experience him in ways you never have before. Mm. You're asking God more and more of you. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll just use the ESV because that's, that's what I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Mm -hmm. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He promises to give you wholeness mm -hmm. from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Shalom. Shalom. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Shalom. Wholeness. Wholeness. Yeah, mm -hmm. he promises. He promises to, he, these are promises that have come true for Janie, for myself. And if you're willing to daily invite him, to have him part of your life, not just to nod to God, mm -hmm. but just simply a, a time where you're intentional and mm -hmm. quiet and mm -hmm. reflective. Mm -hmm. And with palms up, you're mm -hmm. open to receive mm -hmm. what he has for you. I promise you, you will have experiences of God like you never had before. Mm -hmm. You will understand far more of the reality of his good and kind and wise and sovereign presence mm -hmm. that you never have understood mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And as you continue on this path, uh, we get to the third one. Mm -hmm. Psalm 23, he restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the NLT has, he renews my strength. Um, he guides me along right paths. Mm -hmm bringing honor to his name. Mm. I like that phrase, bringing honor to yeah, his name. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. So he restores the soul. He says, no matter what fractured, uh, dis, dis, uh, distressed soul or troubled soul you've had, he will restore you if you let him. If you let him. Key. Yeah, it is crucial. Yeah, it is crucial. But if you let him, then he will, you know, he will restore your soul. And as it promises here, he leads you in path of right paths mm. for his namesake, for mm. his honor. Mm. He will lead you down these paths 
to the right or to the left. Mm -hmm. And these, what are these paths he's going to take you? Is it about a new job or about a marriage, a new mate, or about the, uh, a, a new um, house plan that you're going to have? No, 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 no. It's none of that. That's mm -hmm. lower story. Mm -hmm. Upper story. He will lead you in right paths that will enhance your soul, mm. that will grow your soul, mm. that will deepen your soul, that will allow your soul to flourish mm. just as the rains have come so you know, uh, bountifully here in San Diego. We, we just, things are growing and they're growing. It's green. Yeah, it's green. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> but, but the point is God is wanting to grow your soul. Mm. He wants to nourish mm. you and he wants you to be mm. vibrant and and dynamic and alive and energetic, mm. but it requires you being still. Yes. It requires you taking time mm. to just let him guide you and direct you of where, 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 where's the state of your soul. Mm. Mm. You know, we get on the scale and we see our weight. We, we go to the doctor and we see if we're healthy or not. We do all these external activities. Mm. What Psalm 23 is the internal activity mm. Mm. of understanding what is it going to take for God to restore your soul? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you remind me of what Dr. Charles Allen, who mm -hmm. wrote the book, mm -hmm. um, uh, God's Psychiatry, said that the best prescription he ever gave his patients was the prescription to read and meditate on Psalm 23 three times a day. What if you did that just one time yeah, a that, day? That's more realistic. More realistic. One time a day, soak your soul, nourish your soul, and live whole. No one can live whole without the infilling of the Spirit of God on a daily basis. We need Him every day. That's why manna in the wilderness was given to the children of Israel day by day. We need to be fed. We need to feed our souls. We, we feed our bodies three times a day. But it's not something you have to do, folks. Oh, something you if, want to do. If you, if you don't have that love relationship with him, yes. everything I'm saying and Janie's saying mm -hmm. is just water on a duck's back. Mm -hmm. Because if you truly want to grow spiritually, you truly want to develop your soul, these are words that you can take to heart and maybe just maybe Psalm 23 on a daily basis mm -hmm. could be could be part of your uh, your your mm -hmm. your routine. The landscape of your yeah, day. Yeah, the landscape of your day. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about this Psalm 23, verse 3, it says, He leads me in right paths. What what I believe he offers, no matter mm -hmm. what goes on in your day, no matter how many curveballs you get and how you feel like your life right now is sideways, he gives you focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. He gives you focus. Mm -hmm. He gives you intimacy. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. He gives you calmness. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. And then he leads me in right paths mm -hmm. for his, in the honor of his name. He gives you a focus. Because mm -hmm. you feel confused. You feel scattershot. You feel uh, distressed. You, you, I, I would say one thing, folks, is diminish the time you're watching the news. Mm -hmm. Okay? I listen to the news on... Uh, uh, the internet, uh, YouTube, and then on the radio, but I also say, okay, here's my quota. Here's how much toxicity or how much can I take of all this? Because if you just obsess mm -hmm. with the news on television or uh, on the internet, you're going to be a mess mm -hmm. because you're, you're going to be a, a nervous wreck. You're going to be constantly worrying about, oh no, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. This is a time for you mm -hmm. to take those fears and worries and that scared feeling and say, Lord, my palms are up. Mm -hmm. Though you are my shepherd, mm -hmm. I will not lack anything. Mm -hmm. Either that's a lie or that's straight from the heart of the Father. Mm -hmm. And the truth of that is, if you take that and then invite him in, not mm -hmm. just simply go cognitive, not just simply go in your head, but go head to heart and mm -hmm. allow him in and just say, and be quiet mm -hmm. and be still. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, Peter Drucker, management extra uh, guru, uh, said what gets measured uh, gets done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What gets measured gets done. I would encourage you to keep a little you know, card like this or whatever. Today's the 22nd of March and, uh, and put Psalm 23, all right, at the top. 
and check. If you read uh, the first three verses, fine. If you read all of it, six verses, then March 23rd, March 24th, then you can start to see what gets measured mm. gets done. So your daily planner. Kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> You've done a study on the five horse phrases mm. um, in English language. You've heard me use this before for folks who are part of the chapel. Uh, five is obviously. Okay? Mm. Obviously. Uh, four is just saying. Mm. Three is you know. Okay? Um, let's see here. <laughs> Can't Two, return. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Shh. <laughs> Two, she, she's not laughing at me. She's <laughs> laughing with me. Uh, two is like, mm. and then one, the number one worst phrase, mm. okay, maybe you already know it because you have heard it all the time, whatever. 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 Mm. Don't do a whatever to me. <laughs> no, don't. Don't. <laughs> don't do a whatever to God. <laughs> no, don't. Yeah. Uh. Be able to say, yes, I will. Yes, I want, mm. I will have you more and more in my life. I want to fall in love with you. Mm. I want to have a personal, mm. intimate relationship with you. Mm. I want to be connected to you like I've never had before. Mm. It's interesting. I believe we're going to see our way uh, through this as here in America. I think we're, and overseas, and around the, the world. world. We're going to see our way through this. We are. By, by the grace of God, we, we will. Mm -hmm. and, but I believe that it takes a willingness on our part to understand. I wrote this definition for prayer a few years ago. Mm. Prayer radically changes how we experience life. Mm. It brings us into the intimate presence of the Father, of Father God, mm. and gives us a breathtaking glimpse of the view from above, mm. sort of like upper story. Mm -hmm. The main purpose of prayer is not to make life easier. Mm but to truly know and experience God. Mm. Our goal is not to look at him as a spiritual rabbit's foot mm. and to say, make my life easier, make my life easier, make my life easier. Why me? Why me? Why me? Why me? Mm. No, 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 no. This is a time for you to rise above it, get out of the lower story. Mm. That's a reality you have to face, but go into the deeper, true, eternal reality mm. of God's perspective mm. and God's ways and God's plans for you. Mm. Because he looks at you and he says, I see you, I like you, I understand you, I accept you, and I cherish you. Mm -hmm. One other thought, and then I'll um, pass the torch over to Janie. I was studying in this, uh, preparing for this, and I found uh, myself drawn to Isaiah 30. Mm -hmm. um, Isaiah 30, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And if you're there and you've got a pen and pad, you can maybe jot that baby down because it's one to look at in your time alone. This is very uh, um, compelling. Uh, it's, a, it, it's, it's a salient mm -hmm. thought that, mm -hmm. that God says, I so care deeply about this area of intimacy, of calmness, and of focus mm -hmm. that I'm going to put it not only in the Psalms, I'm going to put it in Isaiah. I'm going to put it over here and, and you're going to see sort of like finding Easter eggs. Mm. God's going to surprise you and say, this is so crucial to your journey for the restoration of your soul and the wholeness for all of us mm. in our spiritual well-being. Here's Isaiah 30, mm. verse 15. Mm. For this is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, only in returning, mm. in other words, intimacy, Mm. Only in returning to me mm. and resting in me, mm. truly resting, mm. will you be saved. Mm. In other words, made whole. Mm. In other words, energy for the day. In quietness and confidence is your strength. Mm. In other words, his might. His, his ability to energize us throughout the day to do what we need to do. But here's the key phrase. And to stay calm. And to stay calm, yeah. But the last part of this verse of mm. Isaiah 30, verse 15. Mm. Mm. Okay, I'll read you the, the other parts first. 
For this is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, only in returning to me, resting in me, will you be saved. In quietness and confidence is your strength. But you would hmm. have none of it. Hmm. Wow, sobering, sobering note. Well, it's a, it's a, if we don't uh, invite him, if we don't pursue this mm -hmm. path with him, Mm -hmm. It breaks his heart, mm -hmm. and he says, you're resistant, you're unwilling, you don't have, you, you have no mm -hmm. desire. Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking is maybe some of you have a desire, and you just don't know how to get there. Don said something beautiful, uh, well, he said a lot of beautiful things, but um, when he talked about the heart of love of Abba Father, if you don't have the heart of love, then all of this is, as Don said, water on the duck's back, but, or I could say water on the sheep's back. Um, we, we have to have the heart of love. It's love. It's the bonds of love that draws us. Perhaps you really like to know this good shepherd. You'd like to know how. You can't, you, you, you hear us, but you don't know how to get there. Um, it's really a, about a relationship. It's, it's not religion. We're not here talking about rules and regulations. We're talking about a relationship with a loving shepherd who knows you by name, who calls you by name. And, and perhaps, um, so here, here's just a, a, simple, a simple poem um, uh, that I'd like to read to you, and it's just called Come to the Good Shepherd. Grace, truth, love for you. Listen. To his voice, gentle, quiet, instruction for you. Come to the stream, cool, tranquil, refreshment for you. Wait for the wind, divine, mysterious life for you. Receive from the cup, health wholeness, joy for you. Mm. All of that from the Good Shepherd. All of that. Mm. And so as we close today, we want to thank you for joining us in this time and for worship of an honoring. Remember it said that he will lead us in right paths, bringing honor, honor to his to name. His name. Yeah. That's all that we desire to help you do and all that we desire for our own souls is to bring honor to his name. Mm -hmm. His name is the name above all names and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus as Lord of Lords. Mm -hmm. And so come with us into his holy presence by simply receiving the love. Just say, Jesus, love me. Love, I need your love. I need you, good shepherd. I'm scared. I feel alone. I, I, I don't know how to not be terrorized. You need to help me. Calm me. Lord Jesus, be my good shepherd. That's all you have to say. You know you need him. We don't have to reiterate all of your sins, or you don't have to do it, and we certainly don't have to do it either. He knows. He knows you. He knows you so well. And you come to him with a repentant heart, yes, but repent, repentance at its very core just means return. Return to him, and you will find all that you're looking for. Um, one of my very favorite quotes is from Maria Bowling. And, um, are you going to use this meat? It'd be better. Oh, would you like me to do that? Maybe it's more appropriate. All right. So let me see. Here it is. Okay. We'll finish with this then. This was the quote we sent out to our chapel. Um, and by the way, if you want to subscribe to Hidden Life Ministries, or actually the best way to do that is to go to janieseltzer.com because I blog there and I send it out and you can receive um, all kinds of things, not, uh, all free, just to nourish your soul so you can live whole. And uh, so don't forget uh, to subscribe. But here is what we sent out and we'll conclude with this today. Life can be horrible, 
horrible beyond enduring, the pits. But the secret of grace, that it that is, that it is, excuse me, let me reread that sentence. But the secret of grace is that it can be all right at the center, even when it's all wrong on the edges. For at the center, where life is open to the Creator and Savior God, we are held, led, loved, cared for, and inseparably bound into the future that has for every, that he has for every child he claims as his. Let me read that last part one more time. Read it all. Read it all again. Yeah, all right. Then Don, we'll go to prayer. Pastor Don says, read it all again. Life can be horrible, horrible beyond enduring, the pits. But the secret of grace is that it can be all right at the center, even when it's all wrong on the edges. For at the center, where life is open to the Creator and Savior God, we are held, led, loved, and cared for, and incomparably bound into the future that He has for every child that he claims as his. This is a quote by Lewis Smedes. And how appropriate right now. The edges are not good, but at the center, God is good. That's what we've been focused on today. The soul center. The soul center. So with that, right. we'll close in prayer. Okay, both of us. All right, let's do it. Palms up. Palms up. Holy Father, we, we give you praise. We want to bring honor to your name. Above all things, may we honor you. May we offer to you a sacrifice of praise. And thank you that we are being held, led, cared for in that incomparable center where you are. Help us to find that center Help everyone listening to us today and those who will listen in the days to come to find the center of their soul, to find you, Jesus, to welcome you, to invite you into the center of their soul and invite the Holy Spirit to flood them with so much love they can't even contain it. They, they will be absolutely ecstatic with the warm love of your spirit. So come, Lord Jesus. In the midst of all the confusion and uncertainty, amidst of all the anxieties and the troubles, Lord, uh, you are still God. Mm. There's nothing that's happened to our country or to our world that you do not know about. And we hold to the fact that you're uh, too good to be cruel, you're too wise to make a mistake, and you're too deep to explain yourself. Mm. You're getting our attention, Lord. Mm. And there are people who are stir being stirred to focus on the soul, on something that really is enduring and lasting. What does it profit a man if he loses his soul? If he gains the whole world but loses his soul? We're here right now, Father, and we want to be able to say from the bottom of our heart, if you could see us and like us and ex understand us and accept us and cherish us, now it's my turn to say, I mm -hmm. want to see you mm -hmm. and like you. Mm -hmm. And I want to understand you more mm -hmm. and accept you mm -hmm. and cherish you. I want a passionate love. I want the ability to, to fall in love with you as you have fallen in love with me. Mm -hmm. And maybe, just maybe, it takes just this simple song mm. each and every day. Mm. Measure it, and it gets done. Mm. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Mm. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths, right paths, for the honor of his name. For the honor of his name. And so to him be the glory. All glory to God who is able to keep us from falling away and who will bring us into his glorious presence with inexpressible joy. All glory to him who alone is God our Savior through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All glory, honor, power, authority, and dominion belong to him who is before all time, is in the present, and is forevermore. Thank you, friends, for worshiping our Father with us. I look forward to seeing you. I will be meeting again with you on Tuesday and Thursday at 10 o'clock on this Zig Ziglar Facebook page. And I hope to see you again to encourage you and remind you. Until then, goodbye. Mm, goodbye. Godspeed. Godspeed. <laughs>